On my first day of learning how to weld, my community expert introduced me to a variety of tools and safety equipment we would use in the upcoming days. This here is called the plasma cutter. Due to its name, it does exactly what you'd expect. The plasma cutter can be used to cut through pretty much any metal you throw at it, not literally throw at it of course, with ease and precision. It does this by heating up the tip of the torch instantly to a whopping 40,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which Fun fact, is hotter than the surface of the sun, which is at a measly 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Before using the plasma cutter, notice there is an extra cable with a clamp on the end of it. This is a conductor. The conductor must be clamped onto any surface in order to create an electrical current. Otherwise, the torch will be unable to cut through any metal. In the example here, I am seen using the plasma cutter to cut through a sheet of copper. An easier way to think about how the plasma cutter works would be that the clamp conducts a positive charge while the torch conducts a negative charge. Next we have the MIG welder. The MIG welder can be used in many cases, but is mostly used for fusing metals together. It does this by feeding a copper wire from inside the machine to the tip of the welder. This wire acts as both an electrode and the filler material to weld metals together. As seen here, when using the MIG welder it can produce a very bright light, making safety equipment very necessary, which we'll come back to later. Up next, we have the blowtorch. The blowtorch can be used to heat metals, sometimes making them easier to shape or bend. It can even create some coloration in specific metals. As seen here, it uses fuel and oxygen to create a flame hot enough to heat metal. To light the torch, you use a flint spark lighter. Get it eventually. Once a flame is going, you slowly begin to add oxygen until there is a small, sharp white flame touching the tip of the torch. This usually takes a few tries to do. As you can see, all of the machinery produce a light that is extremely bright. I'm especially looking at you, MIG welder. This brings me to my final and most important thing I learned, safety equipment, specifically welding helmets. Welding helmets are designed to instantly dim when met with bright light. As an example here, when I point the visor directly at the sun, the helmet dims. However, when I look back at the ground, it becomes easier to see again. Thus, it's important to have a welding helmet on hand when using the equipment mentioned. Day two was the day my community expert and I decided to start making a copper metal rose. The copper we decided to use for this project was from an old gutter Donnie had laying around in his shop. To begin, Donnie had me cut out four evenly sized squares and one rectangle from the gutter using the plasma cutter. These five sheets of copper would eventually be what made up the petals of the rose. After drilling holes into the center of each copper sheet, I began to cut just barely into the middle of each square, leaving enough room for the squares to stay intact. Each cut scene would make up in an individual petal for the flower. Day three, I started forming the shape of the rose. To begin, I hammered the corners of each copper sheet I had cut out the day before using an anvil. Because copper is very malleable, striking copper allowed me to stretch and bend it into the shape I wanted. It also added a nice rippled texture to the petals. As a result of hammering the sheets, the copper heats up. It then slowly cools down over time, causing the copper to become extremely hard to bend. Day four began the assembly of the petals. 
To hold the petals together, we would use a long screw to stick through the middle of each copper sheet. However, before we did so, Donnie introduced me to a technique called brazing. Brazing is used when you want to fuse two or more metal parts together using melted brass, in this case, the screw and the wash. It's similar to welding, however, it is much more precise for working with smaller metals. Not only that, but it also adds a really nice gold color, giving the rose a nice gold center. After the brazing was done, Donnie took the blowtorch to quickly heat up the rose. When dipped in water, this causes the copper to cool extremely fast, making the petals easy to bend, allowing me to make the details and shapes of the rose I wanted. Using my hand, I bent the petals more close together towards the center, and more outwards for the petals that were further from the center. I also used some pliers to add some rivets to make the rose look more authentic. Day 5 was a little bit more of an experimental day. While looking online at some pictures of roses for some reference, I became inspired when I saw a bunch of the roses had leaves. I decided to take whatever scrap was laying around and cut out the shapes for my rose's leaves. After cutting about 5 leaves, I went to the anvil to hammer them into the shape I'd envisioned. Here's a little snippet of what anvil and copper is like. Personally, I like to begin hammering the middle of the copper first. Then, when the middle is rounded out, I begin to move to the edges, adding some detail. When both edges are rounded out, this is a final product. Later, I noticed the leaves and my rose were very similar colors. In this regard, I began to experiment with the different colors I could get out of the copper using the blowtorch. A little bit after, Donnie had came around and gave me some thick copper wire to make the stem with. I first measured the preferred length I wanted, and I lightly went at it with the anvil to add some texture. As you can see, I made some small divots to the stem, as well as flattened both ends. Because both ends were flattened, I decided to take some pliers and twist them to add some spice. Here's what the final product of the stem looked like. Day 6 was the final day I had worked on the rose, thus fully assembling it. I first started off with brazing the stem to the back of the rose. Next, I moved on to brazing two leaves to the back of the rose and another two on each side of the stem. This had been a little scary because both of the leaves and the stem were very small parts. Therefore, any heat left onto one part for too long would cause the copper to melt. Thus, 
This part of the brazing process took a lot of precision and delicacy. Something I did not expect when brazing the leaves was that the continual heat put on them caused the copper to form a nice, rich red color. After the brazing was done, Donnie introduced me to a new tool called the wire buffing wheel, which gave the edges of the rose a shiny, smooth look. I then sprayed the end product with some clear coat to preserve the rose's color. At this point, the rose had been completed, however, because my rose had a slight curve to the stem, this gave Donnie and I the idea to create a stand to hold it up. We decided to make our base using all the scrap I had made when creating the rose, and fusing it all together using the blowtorch, creating a copper nugget. Because the nugget was melted at such extreme temperatures, it caused the copper to form all sorts of different shades and colors, like this one you see here. Donia and I had also experimented with fusing some brass in there, adding some gold to the mix as well. After it had cooled, I drilled a hole into the center of the nugget to stick a wire through it. Afterward, we took a small wire and brazed another little piece onto the top to form a Y shape. Lastly, we brazed the wire to the nugget to keep them from separating, and then sprayed it with some clear coat. The end product looks amazing, and I couldn't be more happy with it. I'm very grateful for my community expert Donnie for committing his time to teach me how to weld. This has been an amazing experience.